They got stupid there. Today on the PlayStation Plus, we finally got a look at the Tier 3 Goofballer Turin French Battleship. I got Dunkirk on there. That's a pretty fun build here. Check out Slot 4 Artillery Plotting Room in a Tier 3, kind of like the Arkansas. So, pretty good accurate guns for a Tier 3. I think they're the same caliber as the Arkansas guns. So, you can have some success with this one. This ship's been out for a little while on the Xbox. Is it still available or not? I don't know. You guys let us know in the comments so that the guys on Xbox can still grab it if it's still available. But they got it like one or two months ago. I can't remember. And then the line was always, okay, well, it'll be available on PlayStation Plus uh, relatively soon. Here it is. All right. So it's always worth picking up these ships if you have the internet subscription service uh, for your respective system. And especially in this case, we got a tier three here. Now there's actually less tier three premiums than tier two, which is a, quite a collection of goofballer ships, a tier two. Uh, and kind of these low tier premiums are all really kind of unique in terms of what they're capable of, how they're set up. And a lot of times they're kind of interesting. So there's a, quite a wide variety uh, between the tier two premiums. And I would say the same thing with this tier three. Now the Taurine, and in addition to uh, being pretty accurate for uh, Tier 3 battleships, it's got good, interesting turret layout. You can see we can hit four main gun batteries on one side, and then you can quickly switch to the other side of the ship and fire two additional guns. So you can do that either by turning back and forth. Uh, and this thing has great turning, 11.2 I think it was. Uh, so I actually put prop mod on here. Uh, if the battleship turning is that good naturally, then sometimes I'll offer the prop mod. Otherwise, I'm going to prefer to switch up the steering or enhance the steering usually because you want to be able to turn as quick as possible in the battleship. Uh, so this game, I don't think we're going to win this one if I'm remembering which game I picked out here, but there's some good brawling sequences, and uh, I think it's just probably the most ac action-packed of the five or so games that I've played in this ship uh, so far. So that's why I believe I picked this one. Uh Armor-wise, you know, I was comparing it to the other uh, Tier 3 battleships, and it's pretty similar. I'm noticing some pretty juicy shots a lot of times, especially in the deck area of the ship. So, protection-wise, I think it's uh, kind of difficult. Seems to be more difficult than NASA. Seems to be no more difficult than Arkansas, the two I'm mainly aware of. And then there's the Tier 3 German, whatever that thing is. Uh, <laughs> We got that to test out. I haven't even reviewed it because I don't really uh, like it too much. But that one's definitely more durable. That's kind of the main thing of the... I think it's like the Koenig Idol or something like that, whatever. Uh, but I'd say this is probably the least durable of the bunch. Okay. Now you'll see me switching back and forth between AP, HE. I think I'm actually going to fire a lot of HE in this particular round. That's not me <laughs> continuing the theme of my last video. Uh, where we were kind of leaning into the HE a little bit. It's just the natural uh, selection. We got a lot of angled battleships downrange, and we got a lot of destroyers, okay? If we had a bunch of cruisers running around, of course, we'd be whacking them with the AP. And I've had some juicy shots with the AP, uh, for sure. Battleships, cruisers, doesn't matter. Uh, but in this particular match, I think we're going to be... You can see we got a horde of destroyers, and they're all coming straight for us. And then they're supported by battleships, so probably going to be a lot more HE than usual. And yes, we are in the back here, but uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Now this terrain does, I think it plays best either pointed directly at or away because you can access both sides of the ship, uh, get those guns going, raising the DPM, the damage per minute or the damage per match uh, by doing so. Um, technically, you're going to have more success sailing away in general because if I'm pushing forward, towards these ships here uh you know let's say i'm kind of going medium speed full speed whatever it is and then i'm charging these battleships switching the guns sure i'm still getting the same damage per minute as if i'm kiting away like we're doing here but i'm getting closer to them i'm putting myself more in the middle of the red fleet you can see they got another ship uh directly to the west of the center of the map so if i'm moving forward in there uh these guys would have access to the broadside. So I think this is just kind of naturally a kiting ship. I believe that's how I would play the Cavour. Is that their, whatever that tier three French. I know it starts with a C, but I can't remember. That one I kind of feel like is uh, designed to be played turn around as well. And that's kind of how I feel about the Ismail tier five Russian battleship. Some of these ships are just kind of configured uh, better just in terms of 
armor angling, or in terms of uh, weapon angles, and then armor angling as well. I didn't show you guys the armor scheme on here, but there's kind of a soft nose section and there's a soft rear section, but the rear section is smaller than the nose section. So I think we're going to be minimizing more damage pointing away as well. And using the prop mod, using this good steering, I mean, we got pretty good mobility so we can maintain as long as Red's kind of moving into us here, then we'll still be firing on reload and doing damage throughout the match, which is what we want to be doing. So a lot of HE shots continuing here, uh, but see, we're kind of paying attention to the map, seeing if we're going to have shots on both sides, and we're just chiming it now. Those are two shatters on the terrain over there, but we could have gotten a fire, we could have gotten some extra damage, helped those guys out a little bit, and we want to be looking for opportunities um, to get both sides of these guns going as well. So I think it's kind of a fun ship to play. And I'd say I think I'm four and five on the ship. Now it's low tier games, obviously. So take that with whatever meaning you want. But, you know, it's an effective ship. Uh, it's capable of putting out the damage. And fun factor is pretty good. So I'd say it's definitely worth downloading. But, um, you know, is it going to be your all-time favorite ship? Maybe, maybe not. You guys let me know who's, if you've tried it out in the comments, what you think here. Uh, we continue to be trying to get these destroyers off the board. Now there's three of them, uh, and we only have three ships left. So you can start to make a case for those battleships, especially the guy that's low in the back there, that Wyoming, I believe it is. But these destroyers in general, we can hit them, if we can hit them pretty hard, uh, we can take out about half their damage per salvo, uh, assuming we connect with three, four shots. So... You know, those destroyers might actually be more easy to quickly remove than the NASA. And the destroyers, you know, the closer we get to us as a battleship, then the more threatening that they become as well. So there's various reasons for the shot selection that we're taking here. NASA, the only target that I have visible on the map at that time, so we're just going to go ahead and, and shoot him. Of course, we're noticing we're getting shot on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, whenever they make themselves known, we'll begin to once again fire off that side of the ship as well so i don't know not a lot we can really do here obviously it's not looking like we're going to win the game at this moment but we're still going to get plenty of action and some more damage as well so nasa moving in now he's got the destroyer moving away from him that's good of course you know usually the lower tier destroyers would be trying to rush these guys as quick as they can get as close as they can and uh, try and torque them point blank range. He's moving away though. He's got the smoke to disengage as well. I does have to worry about the planes flying above him there. NASA low. He's on the ropes. We got him with the permanent fire there. Enemies capturing the base. Of course, we're noticing that. And we're going to try and get towards that base as well. Here's the Klaus horn popping up here. We'd like to get him with a decent whack. We're going to hold our fire here as battleships. We'd like to fire on reload, but if we think. There's going to be some better shots in a moment, then it's always worth holding. I guess we did fire that pretty much on reload, and that's because he hit that magic 45 degree mark uh, where it's kind of the easiest to hit those destroyers when they're coming at you. Wait till they're about to line up at 45 degrees, halfway through their turn, hit them there, and uh, you usually get them pretty decently. So, once again, trying to get those resets off the right hand side of the screen. We'll be switching the guns, hoping the claws uh, starts to rush us. He's got another uh, destroyer right there. It's the V-170. And once again, we're going to try and line up the shot here. So here's the shot that I was thinking of a moment ago. And I was saying we're going to hold. We're just going to see what happens there. And since he wasn't really doing uh, any changes in terms of course or whatever, then we launch. We only hit him with one shell because he's more or less pointing right at us. And that's a lower probability shot than if he turns, which is why we want to give him the chance to do so. Um, shaving off, you know, five seconds of our... Uh, basic damage per match you know reduces the damage a little bit because we hold the shot and gabolde here this thing has been nerfed recently it used to be the most fearsome ship in the game i uh, tempted to keep those guns on the right hand side i was tempted to shoot the end gabolde but this thing is pretty low here and we want to emphasize getting these guys off one at a time also i have to move on to this base to stop them from capturing anyways um, so I'm figuring, well, we're going to wind up shooting this guy in a moment. Uh, anyways, might as well try and get that rearward destroyer off. But here, the Gabolde, <laughs> the shots are coming in here. Not quite a kill shot. That definitely would have been a dev strike a couple weeks ago before that ship got uh, returned to its natural state. But 
Nevertheless, still a wicked shot, and we do have a fire, or a flood and a fire that we can't put out. So, trying desperately to get the V-170 off the board, but I uh, don't believe we're going to be able to before we go down with the ship. So, that's going to be the look at the Turian for you. Once again, I'd say definitely worth picking up if it's free for you, which it should be in the game store, not... Or, I'm sorry, on the system store, not the game store. So, go into the system to find it. If you're subscribed to the PS Plus, for sure it's there. Xbox, maybe. Who knows? Uh, hit the thumbs up if you're into the video, subscribe if you like the channel, and we'll see y'all later. Peace.